Welcome to Second Opinion, the review show here on the Nexus. Today, Ian R. Buck and Ryan Rampersett will be sharing their experiences with Phoenix. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO5. Hey, Ian. Hey, Ryan. How's it going? Pretty well. Uh, so you convinced me to start using well i don't know if you directly convinced me to start using twitter but But i helped but yeah you definitely helped and that was about a year ago but you definitely directly helped me to realize that i should start using a third-party client it's very important that everyone use a third-party client everybody everyone won't they learn run out of keys or something isn't there a limited number make more clients okay sure uh cool yeah (laughs) So yeah, Twitter Twitter is actually kind of an outlier there. I can't think of any other major social media networks yeah. that allow third party clients the way that Twitter does. Yeah, it's it's sort of a, an interesting uh, social network if you even want to call it a social network like Facebook. So to compare, Facebook doesn't have a third party app really that you can mm-hmm. read all the stuff in. It's just the Facebook app and the Facebook website. That's it. Yeah, and Google Plus, as you know, does not have an API worth any weight. No, do they? Do they actually have an API? They have sort of an API you can write to, oh. but not read from. Okay. It's very complicated and not worthwhile. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And luckily, though, the Google Plus mobile apps are very, very nice. And yeah. okay, well, there. Do you think that they're any worse than using the website itself? It's just Google Plus. I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, okay. It, yeah. And one advantage that I can think of to Google Plus's approach is that the notifications synchronize between all of their clients, right? right? Yeah. So when I read a notification on my phone, I don't need to worry about it staring me in the face next time I get to my computer. And so that that's one of those benefits of having an integrated first party solution on both ends. So mm-hmm. it's it's first party on the website and first party as an app. The the company made both. Yeah. The disadvantage, of course, is that sometimes third-party clients are going to come up with a feature that is really, really good that everybody should have, and then the core company can integrate that into the core experience later on as well. I think hashtags and at mentions were that way, right? Yep. So it's not like these things didn't happen organically either. So over time, I think, uh, so hashtags happened, Mm -hmm. and that was kind of with a third-party service called hashtags. Interesting. And it was eventually just integrated into Twitter, and hashtags went out of business a couple of times, but it has managed to come back almost every time. Okay. And uh, retweets. It used uh, yeah. to just RT something, and that would mean that it's been retweeted. Mm-hmm. But then Twitter adopted it into the system. So wait, so you would have to manually copy yeah. the text? For- wow. And then you'd put RT in the front of it, and then Twitter accepted that as a thing, and then they made retweets. And then, so that that was just one part. So then they just automated the process of adding the RT in the front uh-huh. with the attribution at the end. Uh-huh. But then they went the next step. They built in a retweet feature into the system. So you didn't need the letters RT. Which is where we see like link link versions of No, that's the retweeting. quote. That's, that's the, quote the, retweeting. That's the newest one, which okay. is quote retweeting, which is the best one, of course. Yeah. So... It, it it these things have happened in over time in response to people wanting new things on Twitter mm-hmm. and Twitter's adopted them. That's great, but it's not as if every single one of these features has come from cl- third party clients or anything. These are just features people have done in their tweets. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. Some things I can think of from third party clients. I remember back in the day, pull the refresh. That was never a thing the original Twitter apps had, <laughs> but then they bought the best Twitter app on iOS. I think it was called Tweety, right? Maybe, probably. And the guy who made that app went on to work with Twitter and integrated, pulled a refresh for everybody. Okay, mm-hmm. that's nice. So third-party apps, should they're, get those. They're good for your ecosystem, mm-hmm. probably. Yeah, probably. So the the preferences that that each of us are going to come at a third-party client or any client really. Uh, are going to depend on how we use the platform and how what what we want to see on it. And as we discovered a couple of weeks ago, Ryan, you and I have very very different usage cases, very different preferences for using Twitter. And it's it's shocking how different we are. So I've been using Twitter for years since 2009, and you've been on what for a year or so? February 22nd, 2015. Hey, look, that's coming oh, up. That was my birthday. Very nice Twitter day. Yes, my, yeah. day. 
I don't know. Egg day. That that was the day that I tweeted, you don't need a parachute to skydive, you just need a parachute to skydive twice. Yeah, and isn't that your bio now? That's well yeah, it's it's like my tagline that yeah. I put everywhere. Right. Yeah. So we're we're very different in our usage of Twitter. Yeah. So I discovered very soon after I started using Twitter that it has a feature called favorite users. Uh, so when you when you're looking at somebody's profile, you will see a little star up there that you can click, and when you click on it, it becomes gold, it becomes a gold star, and that means that you have favorited that user, and you will receive notifications whenever that person tweets something. And I loved it. I, I loved that that feature because. I don't have to worry about going and checking Twitter all the time, and I don't need to worry too much about having too many people in my timeline because I can, you know, let's say that um, Ezra Klein is a pretty interesting person, but I, by no means do I care about every single tweet that he puts out. I can just follow him, and uh, I, and and I don't have him cluttering up anything that I look at because in a few other cases, such as Hank Green. I want to see every single thing that he tweets about because I am I have a huge celebrity crush on him. So I favorited him and I get notifications whenever he tweets something. I, on the other hand, read every single tweet in order on my timeline. Yeah. Which, so And I agree with you. That's how the timeline should should work. It should be in order. And I I have no two weeks ago I had no idea what this favorited user thing is. It's not, it is a feature apparently in Phoenix, right? Yes. But. And it's way better in Phoenix than it is in stock. It Twitter. feels really hidden. I, I mean, I would have never clicked into some little overflow menu to see that it was there. You're right. Yeah, it is a little. Because that's the menu I go to to block people with. <laughs> yeah, you're right. In Phoenix, it's not as obvious. But, uh, do you, do you have like the list, uh, of favorite users? Uh, cause you have multiple different feeds in phoenix and and favorite users is one of those feeds so if you pull over that drawer on the right no hand tweets side, there you go yeah because yep. I, I would never do that yeah um so you can at least see that there is something there that is empty that you could be putting stuff in but it, it's not super obvious what it is uh, yeah, yeah no i still have no idea why <laughs> um so so yeah so that's kind of where i'm coming at the at the subject from is as somebody who follows many people doesn't actually worry about seeing every single thing that most of those people say i just i have probably five or six accounts that i have favorited um two, two or yeah, about half of whom are people that i know in real life and then the other half are, are celebrities you could just read all the tweets in order right but then i would have a very sad twitter account that's following six people that's fine that <laughs> That's not how I'm going to get more followers, which is the the other goal that I have, is for other people to see the things that I tweet about. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. I probably should interact with more people more often, but, you know. Well, you have other. to. One of the problems with Twitter is they don't go out of their way to get you in interacting. Okay. So, and, and that's always been one of those Twitter problems. So how does how does Facebook or Google Plus go about the well, trying Google, to get people? Well, Google Plus will try to show you things that you want to interact with, and they make commenting really easily mm -hmm. uh, to do either on mobile or on the website. Facebook is almost easier because it's all people you know for the most part, right? And commenting, if, if you're using Facebook the way that you and I would use Facebook, well, I mean it's it's the intended default way. Yeah, most people do it this way. Yeah. Still, probably with, with a generous kind of definition of Most. what what people. knowing people in real life is. Right? Well, right, yeah, and so one of the things on Facebook that they do to make it really easy is you don't have to. So I don't remember what does Google Plus even look like. <laughs> it's not a good sign, right? So I know what Facebook looks like. One of the things Facebook has is they have the comment box always exposed. Okay. Google Plus, you have to click the comment button and then add a comment. Oh, that's. That's new. That's different. That's in the new Google+. Plus. So it's one of those weird two-steppy things. And it's the same on mobile, too. Whereas Facebook always has that comment box ready to go, mm. waiting for you to interact. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's a little bit different. Now, Twitter, I feel like you can follow more diverse topics at once. Whereas on Facebook, you know, it's going to be a very limited set of people with a very limited set of topics. Right. So it's probably easier and harder for those services. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so so yeah. Th so that's kind of how 
the two of us are going to to see things in a in a third party client. Uh, so now let's let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of the default Twitter app that they released on Android versus Phoenix. Um, and we're we're talking specifically about Android because Phoenix is only available on Android, and also we don't really use iOS. No, I do not use iOS. I have used other Twitter apps on Android mm-hmm. over my life. I've used Tweet Lanes, I've used Tweetings, and I use Phoenix now. When I did have a, an iPod Touch fourth generation, I used something. Okay. No idea what it's called now. That's really that's really interesting that you've gone through so many. So you'll be able to kind of compare what they did. That is true. So you'll you'll have a, a lot more. Oh, and that to you add, can compare every. Twitter client I've used, I've paid for. Okay, yeah. That's also mm-hmm. an important thing to note. Most people will never pay for a Twitter client. Are most third-party Twitter clients paid for or free? They used to not be paid for before the API token limit went into effect. Oh. So uh, a few years ago, Twitter decided to destroy the livelihoods of third-party Twitter client developers, which okay. is a very long title to say. And to do that, they instituted this policy where you can only have 200,000 tokens each user took a token Mm -hmm. so effectively you could make if you priced your app at 99 cents you could make two hundred thousand dollars and that's it forever wow and so one of the ways to combat people you know just sort of willy-nilly using tokens is to price your apps higher and higher progressively and i think phoenix is what five dollars it was like 571 or something yeah a really strange number right so it's uh, the way they do it. So um, Velkin is a popular Twitter client right now, okay. or it used to be. And and it's probably on the fourth version now, and I think it's $10. Wow. Because they can't give everybody a token, but it's a really great app, and the developer only caters to like 40 people because there's only 10 people in the world who can buy it. Okay. Uh, so, but there were more people who could buy it before. Because, yeah. Okay. Interesting. So, you know, over time... It, the the Twitter de- demographics have changed a lot for mm-hmm. the third party users. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to talk first about the the pros of using the default Twitter uh, app because that's what what most people are coming from, and and basically we if we want people to use Phoenix, we have to convince them that getting away from the default one is a good idea, right? It's a good idea. Okay, so so first off, okay, yeah, it's free. That's that's a very good feature, actually. Um, it supports features that that Twitter hasn't released to third party apps and and never will uh, release to third party apps. We don't know that they might. I would be very surprised because they've been sticking to that policy for quite a while. It, it's possible they've just de- deprecated the V1 API. It's possible that they might make a V2 API. I don't know what that means. It's okay. Okay, so uh, I'm talking about features like polls. Yeah. Uh, which incidentally don't like Phoenix can't even see that they are there. It, it it just displays whatever text somebody puts in the tweet, and then it there's no indication that there's missing content. So as a result, when I brought up polls the other week, Ryan didn't even know that they were really a thing I, in Twitter. So I don't... I, on the desktop, I use TweetDeck, which okay. is a first-party Twitter client. Oh, it is? They, it, they own it. They didn't take it, I guess. Okay. I would call that first-party. If you own it, it's yours. Right. But it doesn't support polls either. Huh. So I still have no idea. So I guess yeah, I guess they're avoiding preferential treatment the same way that the Nexus line is sort of. I had to think about really, the Nexus or, line, like, or no, or no, that Motorola was avoiding preferential treatment. That's what the issue yeah, is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so moments um, when when actually this is a fairly new one. I remember they were talking about the new moments feature back in October. I think is when it came out, and that is a thing where like if if. Hey, guess what? There's a Super Bowl going on today, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there's going to be a lot of tweets about that going on. And uh, and so so Twitter will automatically put together kind of the top tweets f- on that subject at that time and uh, surface that in, in a separate timeline from your main timeline, right? That's a great feature that is a- very accessible to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you are one of those people who don't have a lot to say yourself, but you want to read a lot of things from other people then this is a great reason to use the stock Twitter app. Yeah. And and I, I can totally understand that they wouldn't have that available in an API for third-party clients, but it wouldn't be difficult for a third-party client to implement something like that on their own. 
because you just have to you just have to be able to access all of the tweets that are out there, which third party clients can. They can, but man, and, does that suck up server usage? Oh, and sure. Time, yeah. and money. It'd be easier if Twitter just made an API. Yeah, of course. There's no reason they can't. Everything would be easier if Twitter just made an API for it. Yeah, and stop limiting it. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the the third feature that we can think of is the while you were away. Which we think that's what it's called. Something like that. We we can't actually get it to pop up for us right now because we have been on Twitter recently. <laughs> and it only... Hey, hey, no, I got an idea. I have like 20 Twitter accounts. So I could pick a different one. Wait, for real? Okay, maybe 12. Okay. Okay. Here, here, I'll, I'll sign into fake SPPS. Here we go. Let's find out. Oh, okay. I, fake SPPS doesn't follow anyone. Doesn't follow <laughs> <laughs> we didn't think oh, this well. through. Okay, so basically, what it does is, if it's been a while since you've taken a look at your timeline, it will surface some of the top tweets that have happened since you last looked at your timeline. So that's not useful for somebody like Ryan, because Ryan is checking it every forty-five seconds. I read from the top to the bottom, and it's not even forty-five seconds. Wait, it's the, usually... the top to the bottom. So most recent yeah, to no, longest no, no. to go. Uh, bottom to the top. That's okay, what it's called. there we go. And I, I read from bottom to the top, and I'm pretty much just always there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but for somebody like me, sometimes there are things that it will surface that are nice, but quite often it's surfacing things from my favorited users mm-hmm. who I get notifications for anyway. I wouldn't so. be surprised if those favorited users signal to it that you might want to see it or something. <laughs> But yeah, so 90% of the time when I see while you were away, it's an annoyance and I click the little X to make it go away immediately. Now, from a, the perspective of a person who is newer to Twitter or doesn't use it frequently, like hourly, mm-hmm. they use it you know, every other day or something, that might be useful for them. They might right. see interesting things from their timeline they missed mm-hmm. legitimately. Yeah. But to somebody who uses Twitter a lot as a choice, that it isn't so useful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Again, a perfect candidate for an API. Now, another feature that I actually really, really like um, that has to do with surfacing is that the default Twitter app will notify you when there are more people than usual who you follow doing the same thing. So, for example, if they if they tweet the same link out, if they like the same tweet, if you know, so things like that, which is a really, really good. Uh, feature for my usage of of Twitter because let's say I don't care about every single thing that Travis McElroy tweets. Mm-hmm. I don't care about every single thing that Justin McElroy tweets. But when both of them are tweeting about the same thing, chances are I'm going to care about it. So I don't disagree that it's a great feature in theory, but it needs to be exposed to the API so I can use it. Yeah, right. And that's and that's part of why it has to be part of this discussion, right? Is that it, it's not available in Phoenix. No, it isn't. Yeah. And just think about why that is so useful. So if if there's a breaking news event and you don't know mm-hmm. about it yet, but four people tweet about the earthquake in San Francisco, well, you know that there's an earthquake now because you got a notification. Yeah, it's kind of a, a mini personalized version of moments, right? Because moments right. are for big public events that mm-hmm. everybody should know about. And so Twitter's going to push that moment out to everybody and uh, um yeah th- this notifications thing for for when people that i'm following are doing the same thing right. is a is a more personalized version of moments we discussed uh, a a controversy about twitter this week in the fringe you can listen to us talk about that and we we discuss how this feature is going to be morphed into the algorithmic version mm-hmm. someday yeah i like it the way it is right now i though. understand uh the twitter app also will show photo tags but Honestly, Twitter is not a platform where I think photo tags are useful because that's Facebook. <laughs> Let's be honest. Let that's Facebook. I, I mean, I don't know how many people use Facebook for public pictures, so I mean, I guess it's okay, but I just wouldn't take people as a photo tag. I would just take them in the tweet. Right. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, yeah, cuz like yeah. if if I'm taking pictures with a group of people and I need to tag them, I already know them in real life. So chances are they're going to be using Facebook. And if I don't know them in real life, but I took a picture of them and I'm posting it anyway, that's pretty spooky. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I, actually, I think one of the most amusing times that I had a picture taken of me and posted on Twitter was when I was shoveling the sidewalk 
and the high schooler who lives across the street from me took a picture on her iPad, way zoomed in, so it looks terrible. I, honestly, it looks kind of like that picture of Bigfoot, you know, the, the Sasquatch walking away into the woods, sure. except that I'm shoveling and I'm in the middle of a bunch of snow. And she, I, I, actually, I don't know if she actually tagged me in that one. She just said, uh, I got a picture of Ian R. Buck shoveling snow or something like that. I was right. like, yeah, great, okay. <laughs> and that that's the way to do it. You don't tag... The yeah. picture you take the tweet yeah um also back to that favorite users feature that i love so much uh the the default twitter app will notify me when somebody that i favorited retweets something so for example ryan what, what was the last thing that you retweeted without like quote retweeting um how am I even supposed that, to tell you that? <laughs> well, we'd have to probably look at your profile and, and scroll down until we found, found a retweet. Um, but so, so for example, that, that thing that you retweeted, I would get notified about it using the default Twitter app, but I would not get notified about it using Phoenix because I don't, for some reason, Phoenix just doesn't have that as an option. I have no idea what the answer is, so I'm just going to look it up on the website. And I can't tell you because it doesn't want, to, want, doesn't want me to know. No clue. None. Yeah, and so that so that's one of that's one of the big sticking points for me when I was trying out Phoenix mm -hmm. and try, comparing it to the Twitter app was that I I was going to have to come to terms with the fact that I wasn't going to be seeing things that Hank Green is retweeting anymore. That's really strange that Phoenix doesn't support it. Do you suppose that there's a reason? Just an oversight? It doesn't seem like some that's something that's missing from the API. It's I, doubt I mean it. it's it seems like it really should be. You there. could you could just. Ping them because I've talked to the Phoenix devs before. I, I I I shall do that. Yeah, yeah, it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the final thing that I can think of that that the Twitter app has over Phoenix is that when you're using Push Bullet, so we're getting really far into the the fringes of usage cases here, right? So we're talking about people who uh, are both using twitter and uh using push bullet and which app they're using it on and everything uh but so the the default twitter's notifications when they come up on a desktop they when i click on it it'll open up twitter.com so i love this feature i use it being able to click on the yeah and bring yep but i haven't seen push bullet notifications for like three weeks or so at least what's your phone doing <sighs> It's not like I don't have two phones to do it either. That's true. That's true. Uh, and it doesn't happen here or on the Mac, so I don't. I don't know. Push Bullet probably freaked out and stopped. It, yeah, I mean it's not a. It's definitely not a system wide uh, problem because I Push Bullet still works for me. So I guess I just don't have it anymore. Yeah. Uh, but so yeah, when when I click on notifications from Phoenix, they just disappear and it doesn't open anything. So, oh well. You know, I just never think about that. When I, I, so I have a notification sound when I get a tweet. Mm -hmm. And if I'm on the MacBook Air, I'll just open whatever Twitterific or something. Yeah. Tweetbot. I think that's what it's called. Right. A lot, too many clients, man. Yeah. But yeah, so for me, I, I actually do have to open up my phone to, to interact with that now because the only other way would be to, yeah, go to the website, the Twitter website. And then try and f track down what tweet it was notifying me about. Yeah. And that's not a guarantee, you know, because it, it doesn't give me very much text to work with. And also, also, uh, here's another th difference is that Phoenix will group all of my favorite tweets into one notification. Right. Whereas the default Twitter account or app will give me a different notification for every single favorite tweet that comes through. And that got really out of hand. Because I would wake up in the morning and of them. and you would have tweeted five <laughs> times and Will Wheaton have t would have tweeted about the freaking L.A. Kings game that went on the night before a bajillion <laughs> times and you know so that's that's great yeah so that that is something that I really really like about Phoenix is that it groups all those into one notification I don't have to worry about them so that that's 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 a thing of. So when, when a developer has developed cross-platform, they're going to take the easiest route to make their app go both ways. Mm -hmm. And it's easier if they don't have to worry about the way that their app works on a platform differently than a different platform. Uh -huh. So it's easier to send out a single notification per thing on both platforms than it is to figure out a way to group them together. Right. Phoenix can do it because they're only on Android, they're only on Android and they actually get paid. Yeah. 
Uh, all right. So, any other pros of using the default Twitter app that you can think of? It's been a while since you've used it, hasn't it? Uh, I've used it as recently as sometime. Right. And you know, it's an it's a it's an app. It works. One of the nice things about it is if you use it and then switch phones to a different platform, you probably find it there too. Mm-hmm. Assuming you switch from Android to iOS or iOS to Android. Right. Do they have a Windows phone? Does anybody have a Windows phone? I have no idea. Facebook and and Microsoft are pretty buddy buddy. Um, they do have a Windows Universal app. I don't know if that means it's also on the phone or not. Oh, that's a good point. Actually, it probably does mean that it's on the latest versions of the phone. Yeah, yeah. So there's that. What else? Uh, it's uh, not a huge app. You can download it pretty quick. It's preloaded on most phones mm-hmm. from Samsung. If that's your thing, go tweet now. Do you think that it's important that somebody looking over my shoulder while I'm using my phone can recognize that I'm using Twitter? Because if they look at me using Phoenix, they're not going to re- be able to know that at all. Depends on the person. Like, if I saw you using Twitter, I'd run up to you and we would do a jig. You, we would do a jig? Yeah. Okay. The Phoenix jig. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, if you saw me using Phoenix. Yeah. Was, okay. Whereas, if I saw you using Twitter, it's like... What a terrible person. And that's actually something that Phoenix does for us. <laughs> really? We'll get into that. Yeah, oh, okay. so, uh, um, so let's talk about the pros of Phoenix. Okay, and we can We can actually start with the one that you reminded me of. So Phoenix will tell you what client somebody was using mm. when they posted a particular tweet. So you can just kind of look at, at your fo- the people who you're following and scoff at them internally <laughs> and go, ah, oh, you're using the Twitter web client. I am so sorry. <laughs> And it's, and it's, I guess, so to do that, what do you do? You just click on the tweet, right? Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And it shows up down in the lower right-hand hey, look, corner. This tweet was sent by Phoenix for Android. Hey. Wait, were you looking at one of mine? No, that was me. Oh, of course. Okay, so this is one from Brian Mitchell, tweet bot for Mac. Yep. So th- That makes th- sense. That makes sense. Man, I only tweet to the same five people, apparently. Apparently. <laughs> yeah. Those conversations get pretty great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, actually, the the thing that immediately sold me on the idea of trying out phoenix was seeing that it had a dark theme and that's really important to you isn't it it is that's really interesting so why is that so important because i look at my phone i look at screens so much throughout my day that having dark themes is the like the one very easy step that i can do to not burn out my eyes immediately true story and i wish that i I wish that it was easier to put that effort into like doing that on a desktop. Mm-hmm. Uh, unlike, okay, so, so when I was in Sweden, I was doing a, uh, a partner web development th- project mm-hmm. with, with another guy. And he had, I forget what distribution of Linux he had on his laptop, but everything, everything was black with white text. And I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> Where do you get this from? I couldn't even. I couldn't comprehend the user interface because you know, you it was know what so they call minimalist. That? They call that the terminal. The, no, 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 okay, no. He he had it, it was it was a GUI. Yeah, yeah. But it was so minimalist that I couldn't identify where the buttons were, what he was doing. Mm-hmm. It was. I was just like, I am in the presence of a demigod here. So in the same vein as that, OS ten actually, I don't remember which version, but it was one of the recent, like, last three years, they actually added a dark mode UI. Okay. Not that that matters, because there's almost no UI in OS ten anymore. Mm-hmm. But they have it now. Yeah. And, the, and of course, it kind of broke down as soon as he had to visit any web page. White. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so web pages have a so, dark theme. So I know we call it the dark theme here, but is it actually called the dark theme in the, in the app? I believe so. Because I know some apps, like my uh, Reddit app, has three themes. They have the standard white theme with the traditional Google cards on the gray background. You know, white card on a gray background. Okay, yep. Then they have the dark theme, which is basically just a gray card on a slightly darker gray background. But then they have the night theme, mm. which is actually just black. Okay, yeah. So we have, in Phoenix, we have light, dark, and black. Yeah, so we like the black theme, right? Yeah. Yeah, me too. Um, I think... Because the dark theme is just a bunch of gray stuff. Yeah, yeah, but it, and it's 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 darker. Not it's it's kind of hard to tell the difference between the black and the dark one I unless can tell. you unless you are switching between them like immediately. I can tell. Okay, fine. Um, it would make a, a heck of a difference if you were on an AMOLED display. I am. Oh right, I'm not. <laughs> uh, so oh yeah, I, I'm jealous of you there. It looks black. 
Yeah. Yeah. And my, my sister actually chewed me out when she saw me using Phoenix because she was like, what is that? Why is everything black? And I was like, that's better for your eyes. And she's like, no, it takes more work to look at that. That's not how light works. No. She, I, so <laughs> I'll tell you a story about this AMOLED thing. Okay. So as you know, I use Chromecast to stream some things that, you know, video files. Uh-huh. And so because Chromecast through VLC doesn't exist yet and it's coming in version 3, oh. you can cheat and Chromecast the whole phone display right. playing the video through. Right. Well, when the UI hides, the phone looks off, but the screen's still on because it's AMOLED. You can't tell because it's just showing black here, but it's showing up on the screen the full stuff. That's amazing. So I always forget. I always try to wake up the phone, but then I end up turning it off and it breaks. Uh, and the Chromecast starts. And so then starts, I just start oh, it all over. Aw. Uh, oops. Yeah. But as you were. Uh, so uh, going along with the theming uh, feature is you can also, I think the only other significant part of the theme that you can change is the color that links and you know highlight type things uh, become and i of course changed it to orange because a orange is my favorite color b it goes really well with black and c it's the color of the app icon now i was about to ask you what the default was but i assume it's red probably because that's what mine is okay and i don't change things that are, uh, I, I try to be as default as possible all right uh there are some other th- nice things you can do you can uh do your, your rounded user icons mm-hmm. if you care about that for some strange reason. Uh, you can change it, it's your. It's nice to have the option. You can change your font size if your DPI is insane. Or if you're blind like my father. Uh, you can change your font type. Mm-hmm. It, I assume it uses Roboto everywhere, but I don't have any way to tell. I'm not good enough at recognizing fonts. Well, the only reason I can say that is because there's a condensed option next to a thin option next to a regular option. And those are all subtypes of Roboto. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Uh, so, yeah. So, the the theming isn't extensive here. A different Twitter app I've used, which was Tweetings, had an insane theme designer thing. So, you could you could download... Insane the, in a good way, as in, like, there were many, many so options? So many customization options. So, you could download it, and it would come preloaded with some themes. You know, your standard dark and white and blue theme. Mm-hmm. But then you could get the optional theme downloader thing to download themes other people have made. Right. And it's just so much theming. This reminds me of that SMS app that I had one of my students investigating mm-hmm. for her final project, and I forget which one it was. Too many themes. It was Too pre- many options. Um, I stopped using the app because the default theme changed in a way I didn't like it, and really? I wasn't going to wow. use it anymore. <laughs> well, okay, so for that, what, if you're going to put that many options in an app, it's very, very important to have sort of a, a user marketplace sort of thing for people to create a theme and then share it with other people because that's going to make it very easy for somebody like you to just go like okay scroll through a few themes find one that looks good for me make the defaults the best options possible okay because if your defaults aren't good it's gone it's over well that highly depends on preferences right no i mean the the, there's it's android material design black done but phoenix uh defaults to light theme yeah i know we had to change to black but one of the default themes in phoenix is the black theme okay but if they got rid of that theme put it in their little store thing that it's all free but you know what i mean you have to go download it i would just leave oh gotcha okay not doing that much work uh so another another advantage that phoenix has over the default twitter app is that it will actually display outside media type things so like the one that i can really think of off the top of my head is instagram yep because will wheaton tweets pictures that he posts to instagram quite often and heck no there was some reason they uh turned it off on the web in the twitter version i don't remember what Hmm. the reasoning was but yeah it was really really annoying to have to open that up in link bubble and uh, destroy my life whereas in phoenix it just displays the image no problem it's funny how that works yeah yeah uh phoenix doesn't have ads aka oh, promoted tweets now that is a wonderful thing yeah that is a huge huge selling point for me i don't understand why twitter hasn't just forced all the clients to deal with it because I, I well okay if they did that then they would be asking way too much because they've already forced the clients to like pay or charge money essentially you know they they didn't directly force yeah, them to but they, but they don't they... get any money out of it why don't the clients why aren't the clients forced just to put promoted tweets in the stream then because 
because then nobody would make uh, a third party like okay well I wouldn't be using any third party clients if I was still seeing ads in it I wouldn't pay money for a thing and see ads in it well I would be using a fourth party client then <laughs> that would strip it out you would be using I'd a be one- content blocker I'd be using my own Twitter app like I would fork it on GitHub compile it myself just so I wouldn't see their crappy ads oh man um. Yeah, we don't like promoted tweets. They're not. Twitter isn't a place for ads. No, it does not work for me. Now, as much as we say that, we haven't put forth a, an alternative for Twitter to actually make money. No, I don't care. I don't Which, no ads. Right. Okay. Uh, one of my favorite things about Phoenix is that it has multiple feeds. So yeah. you'll have the timeline in one feed. Um, you'll have your favorite users in another feed. Uh, mine is quite extensive. Yours has nothing in it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, and this is especially useful having a, a feed for your favorite users because uh, not quite often, but you know more often than I would like, I would accidentally hit like the uh, dismiss all all notifications on my phone or like my phone would have to restart. Actually, this was a huge problem when I had the Nexus 5 and the Nexus 5 had the power button issue where it was restarting itself oh, yeah, all the uh, time. every once in a while. Yeah, and, and so I would lose all of those tweets that that i had waiting for me in the notifications and i wouldn't know how to find them all uh yeah that sounds like a really sad tech problem it is it was but i've solved it by using phoenix (laughs) um yeah you have a, a feed for activity so that would be people liking or retweeting uh your your tweets um messages mentions and uh you actually have a feed for the things that you have liked so it'd be interesting to go and look at brandon johnson's likes feed (laughs) oh don't worry they're worthless so i'm curious because i i I don't know if the way that i use likes is the way that most people use likes i like something if i like it okay how about when it was called favorites i favorited it if i favorited it Thanks, Ryan. You're so helpful. <laughs> Anytime. So, because I, I will like something if I legitimately like it, right? Yeah. But I will also like something if I want to end the conversation without having to respond to them. Well, I mean, that just might happen in my case. I never think about it that way. Yeah. Because, mm-hmm. like, you know, it's it's like, oh, yeah, you said something. I don't have anything really to say in return like... <laughs> that isn't going to just prolong this conversation into a really long... Just, just prolong it. Yeah. So, no, I just like things and then leave. But you could just do that. That'd be okay. What? You could just leave. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, right. Because as soon as I tweet that, as soon as you tweet something at me, you forget about it. And you're not going to notice if I don't come back with something else. (laughs) Oh, man. So I guess guess when I like something, I tend to, I guess there's two things I do. If I like it because it's good or if I'm trying to save it to come back to it later okay but if i'm trying to save it to come back to it later i usually just share it over to push bullet which i can't get anywhere anymore <laughs> but i still do it anyway you're gonna have to solve that problem man because push bullet is the best thing in uh, the world it doesn't matter oh we should say so that sometimes oh my gosh nothing but praise from me <laughs> why wait a minute oh you'll have to come back and listen to that one later to find out my real thoughts in the future in the future past yesterday tomorrow next week who knows um yeah oh the oh another thing um that is kind of a bash at the default Twitter app for the favorite tweets. A lot of times if I tapped on a tweet, like if I tapped on a notification, Mm -hmm. it would open up the Twitter app, but it wouldn't send me to that tweet. It would, it would just keep me at the the timeline or whatever page I happened to be on at the time. And I would have to pull down the notifications again and tap on it again. And then it would bring me to the correct one. Phoenix never messes up. It brings me straight to the correct uh, um, timeline. So do you ever use the activity section? Not, v- no, so, no. So I use it. So I, uh, I, I tweet with uh, Brandon mm-hmm. underscore MN a lot. Right. And as you know, there's a prolific amount of likes going along. Yep, I have heard. And sometimes I'm confused which thing he liked. So I need to remember where in the conversation that was. Okay. And so I have to go to activity to see what the stream of likes were. That's pretty funny. And, you know. It's a, it's a Twitter problem. Most of the times I go there to just kind of double check on oh, who is that person that just followed me? Are they real? Probably no. not. They're not real. They're never real. Oh, well. Mm-hmm. I wish that real people would go and follow me in our book. 
My Twitter.com. Yeah, or the other way around. Sure, why not? Because as we know, Twitter.com slash analytics is not the same as analytics.twitter.com. <laughs> that is a, a very good observation. It was the same for search. Whoever went and, uh, got, and that. Yeah, got that username, brilliant, brilliant job. Well, somebody had to. So so what's, uh, I mean, obviously you've been using Phoenix. You're still I, using Phoenix. I don't know how long I've used it. It's been at least a year, if not longer. Okay. Uh, I, I think I switched over from tweetings when they messed up the th- theming thing so bad that the default looks awful. I couldn't handle it anymore. There was another issue with tweetings. I don't remember what it was necessarily. Oh, right. Uh, at, at some point during Android's upgrade history, you know, from major version to major version, mm-hmm. it was probably... Four to five, four point four to five. Okay, so when we got material, right? So, tweetings updated to material, but for some reason their composition tweet box broke. It would no longer automatically capitalize words. Oh, and oh I just, no! I just no, oh, unacceptable. Man, and uh, I left. Yeah, I hate it when I. What is it that causes that? It's Android so strange. being dumb. No, mm. it's not Android's fault. It's usually a developer's fault. And so what, why why did you leave Tweet Lanes? Tweet Lanes, uh, Chris Lacely decided to stop development. Okay. And uh, then he made other stuff instead, so I got that. Okay. But he's a whiner now, so don't don't pay too much attention to him. Um, yeah, so obviously, I mean, Phoenix is good enough for you to continue using it now. If there's so- another one that comes out later, that's better. So I guess I've used other Twitter apps in, in between those as just to try. So I've used... Carbon. That was a, a couple years ago. That was a really fancy, um, like it was hyper material design. Whoa! What does that mean? It, it defaulted to a black theme or a dark theme, I guess. Uh, it was. It had a boatload of animations that would destroy, like a Snapdragon four hundred, but was fine on a higher end eight hundred. Okay. Like the things would like if you tapped tweet, the the timeline would fade out and the tweet would swoosh in. And then if you swiped back, the tweet would swoosh out. If you clicked a profile, it would, like, climb in. Just, this just is bunch, kind of egregious. Just a bunch of animations that were just absurd. Uh, I've used um, some other free ones. I don't know what they're called. But Matt doesn't have just a boatload of money, although he does, to spend on apps. Mm-hmm. So I just got him a free one. That wasn't the stock. Okay. And then that was fine. I've used Plume back in the day. That was a that was an original generation Twitter client. Oh wow! That, that was that's really old. Um, yeah, there's there's a ton of Twitter clients, and I've used other Twitter clients on other platforms. Uh, MetroTweet on Windows. I I used. <laughs> I heard that you weren't too impressed with MetroTweet. I mean, I wanted to like, it, but again, it was a Windows app, and so mm-hmm. that means it was always locked on that Metro UI. Yeah. I used in the very early days of Twitter some Adobe Air Twitter client. What? I have no idea what it's called anymore, but it, it used to be a thing. And of course, I used TweetDeck when it came out, and then I still use TweetDeck now that it's owned by Twitter. I used Twitterific on iOS. I used TweetBot on OS X. I paid $20 for that horrible thing. I can't believe that I'm getting a list this long. This is incredible. I mean, I've used a lot of Twitter clients because I like Twitter. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's fair. Yep, there, that's all I got for you. Uh, so, 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 who do you recommend Phoenix to? Because, as we said, like it really depends on your usage cases for Twitter. I will recommend Phoenix to a person as soon as they're ready for it, and I will them. I will tell you if you're ready for it based on how much you tweet and how you tweet. So, just send Ryan a link to your Twitter profile, and he will look at it and he will tell you if Phoenix is right for you. <laughs> exactly. This is great. Um, I, yeah, I think that Phoenix is is really great for somebody who, um, yeah, appreciates the the theming, right? Um, is going to a- appreciate the sanctity of the timeline, right? The 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 chronological timeline, and will also appreciate having a timeline for like each of those different things that you do right. in Twitter. Um, and it's not to say that Phoenix is the only good Android Twitter app right now. Right. There are other good paid-for Twitter apps mm-hmm. and even some not paid-for Twitter apps that, That's you incredible. Can, that you can still get that are okay, mm-hmm. that that are not stock. Um, yeah. However, even even as much as I like Phoenix, I, I have to keep the default Twitter 
app around for those cases where uh, somebody tweets out a poll and I need to reply to it. You just, know, something just like that. To stop. Just it's over. I it need, does not matter. Okay, you said that like nobody that you know tweets out polls. Guess who did? Brandon Johnson. Yeah, I and, found a and poll. How of many his. people did he get? I don't remember. We'll go look later. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm very curious. Um. No, it's it's actually pretty important for me to be able to respond to Hank Green's polls because he will actually like determine what the next uh, subject of his video is going to be based on the the Twitter polls. I don't care. I love Hank I, Green. Do, I mean, that's great. He's a lovely person, but I do not care. It's Twitter's fault. Okay, they yeah, could build it's it true. into the it's API. True. They could even just link me to the bloody website. And that, and that is something that I would like to make clear. I hate uh, uh, Twitter as a technical thing. I, I don't like it as a, as a platform. I'm only here because of the people who are here. Thanks, Ryan. You know, I, I like it as a technical platform. It's a great example of a working, living, breathing API. It's a great example of what to do wrong with a living, breathing API. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess... Twitter was great until we hit that point where they cut off every third party mm-hmm. with the token limit. We had some evolution there for a little bit when we had Tent, the okay. decentralized Twitter alternative. We had some innovation there when we had App.net with the subscription model Twitter. Okay. And right. both failed. We're still stuck here on Twitter. I'm waiting for the shoe to drop to get off of this platform so we can go somewhere else that doesn't suck. I'll see you yeah. there. Contrast it with Google Plus, which is a platform that I adore. It's a ghost town. But yeah, there's nobody there. It's so sad. Mm-hmm. People need to go use it. It's pointless. I still I still post things there. I, do too. I cross post between Google Plus, Twitter, and anymore. Facebook. That's, a, that's way too much work. It's not uh, well. Okay, so I cross post when I'm posting something like a, a link to thing, right? to yeah. work that we've done. Right. Um. But yeah, I mean, it's. It, I think. Can you it, imagine it, using yeah. Google Plus like Twitter? For singular small thoughts, the platform's too heavy. Well, that's, yeah, that's the thing is, yeah, Twitter is good for that, but does that matter? Is that a thing that I need in my life? Yes. All right, there you go. We have that answer. <laughs> I, I, for a while, actually, I think I was doing this before I uh, finally jumped onto Twitter, but I was using Yik Yak for that kind of thing. I never used that. And it was, it was pretty fun when I was in an area a.k.a. Morris, mm-hmm. next to the university, where there were a bunch of people who also used Yik Right, Yik. and you knew those people, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and well, yeah. Right. Uh, supposedly, you wouldn't know who was posting a yak, but I guess everybody knew me well enough that when I said something, uh, they were just like, oh, hi, hi, IB. And I yeah. was like, God, no, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, um, Max Marty replied to one of mine with w- w- saying something about, uh, okay. haha, Chrome OS sucks. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess the answer wasn't Mudkips. No. And then I asked him how he knew that it was me, and he was like, you cross-posted that on, on uh, Facebook. <laughs> Giving it away. Plus. I was like, oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> that, that's so obvious. Yeah, I didn't that, even is, think of that. <laughs> that is pretty funny. I, I use the, the different social platforms for different purposes. We don't mm-hmm. have to talk about it here, but, you know, use whatever you like. If you want something better, let us know and we'll tell you. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah I mean, Phoenix is a, definitely a good one to use uh, <coughs> if you happen to be on Android. I agree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Ryan, I think we've answered part of this question. <laughs> Where can we find you on the internet? Well, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on Twitter at Ryan Mar. And besides Twitter, you can find me on Google+, Plus, which is where I post mostly pictures of cats and dogs and other things outside. Yep. And I am Ian R. Buck, and you can find me at Ian R. Buck most places twitter Flickr, uh google plus i'm just ian buck what yep. about that new place you're also on which new place patreon the patreon yes right um yeah if if you like the art that i am uh creating and you want to support me financially you can find me on patreon that's pretty cool if you like my tweets patreon i need i need to remember actually to cross post on patreon as well because oh it would be used well okay so so it'd be used like that serves as a feed of things that i create and that is the probably the platform that it, where it matters the most for the feed to be complete, right? If you believe that, that's okay. Yeah. I mean, okay, so Facebook is the place where most of the traffic comes from, but Patreon Which is funny. But Patreon is the place where like the the, you know, quote unquote true fans go. Well, I have a note here that we're supposed to encourage someone. 
Yes. So uh, since this is Second Opinion, our reviews show, if you uh, have some you know feedback about this particular review, or if you have something that you want to review on our on our um, show, then please hit that contact button over on the right hand side of the website or at the bottom depending on if you're on desktop or mobile um and we will receive an email and hopefully actually read it hopefully hopefully i don't i forget to check that email address every once in a while so. you don't have to you don't wait what doesn't oh yeah the okay. paul horn one. well if i get it i'll sorry right exactly don't worry about it. i'll get it <laughs> i'll read your feedback or your your desires tell me tell me now wow that click, click the button you could have phrased that much much better it's fine See you around, everybody. Have a good one.